Why do some clinics continue doing day 3 embryo transfers? This is an important question and if you want to find out the answer, please watch the entire video. I am Dr. Anirudh Malpani, I am the Medical Director and an IVF Specialist at Malpani Infertility Clinic. Standard practice today is to do only day 5 transfers, what are called blastosis transfers. However, some clinics continue doing day 3 transfers and you need to ask yourself why. Let me give you some background, some context, so you have a better sense of this because a lot of these words are completely Greek and Latin for patients. And sadly, a lot of IVF clinics will take advantage of a patient's ignorance. And I won't say cheat them, but though even though cheat is actually the right word, uh, maybe I don't want to use the word lie also, but they will conveniently edit the truth and not share the right information with these patients and take advantage of their gullibility and their ignorance. Just because patients aren't doctors, it's easy to take them for a ride and a lot of patients will trust their doctor completely. Now it's important that you trust your doctor but that trust needs to be earned and that's why it's so important that you need to understand exactly what's happening and why day 5 or blastosis transfers have become the standard of care all over the world and why they're so much better than day 3 transfers. Now what happens on day 0 which is day 0 in the IVF lab is the day when the doctor does the egg collection, takes out the eggs and sends it to the embryologist in the IVF lab where he fertilizes the eggs with the sperm. This could be IVF where the sperm fertilize the egg themselves or it could be say, you inject a single sperm inside the egg. From day zero, we now move on to day one where we check for fertilization, what's called a fert check, where usually this egg now has two pronuclei, which means it's fertilized. Then we move on to day two, that's another 24 hours when again the embryologist checks the embryos under the microscope to see how many cells they have and by this time they've started dividing what's called cleavage so that now these are four cell embryos by day three these cells will have divided further and become eight cell embryos now you must understand that this is fairly generic every embryo is going to be different some will have six cells on day three some may have ten cells on day three but Top quality embryos usually will have 8 cells and we will grade them depending on how clear the cells are, whether the cells are equal or not, whether they are fragments and you don't need to worry about the technical details, that's the embryologist's job. Good embryologists will give you photographs and explain to you how they grade the embryos and you can go to drmalpani.com which is our website where we have an embryo atlas where you can actually look at what good quality embryos and bad quality embryos look like and check your embryo photographs with those of the atlas so you know whether the embryos are good quality or not. Similarly, you then wait till day 4 by which the embryos will have continued to divide and formed a ball of cells what's called a morula and by day 5 this ball of cells will now have a cavity. This cavity is called a blastocele and this ball of cells is called a blastocyst. You can't differentiate individual cells anymore because there's so many of them, there are about 100 cells. These are what we will then transfer in the uterus and this is called a blastocyst transfer. Why do we do a blastocyst transfer? Because our ability to grow embryos in the IVF lab is about till day 5, maybe day 6. We are not allowed to grow embryos beyond a particular stage and in any case our lab culture conditions in vitro aren't good enough to allow us to grow embryos successfully beyond day 7 or 8 in any case so the question is moot. So a maximum day at which we can grow them is about day 5 or day 6 by which time they should be blastocysts. So why do we want to wait so long before putting them back in your uterus? Because A, the in vitro environment in a good IVF lab is as good as the in utero environment so there's no point in putting them too early. Plus more importantly it allows us to pick and choose so we can select the best embryos so we can select the top quality blastocyst. And we can choose only that one and put that back because that's the one which gives you the best chance of getting pregnant. What's the point of transferring all of them? What's the point of transferring ones which aren't good quality? Remember, when you transfer on day 5, you're not wasting the rest of the blastocyst. The remaining top quality blastocysts still get frozen, which means you have another chance at getting pregnant in the next frozen thaw cycle, which is much less expensive. So why not just go ahead and transfer on day 3? Because after all, in order to become a blastocyst, an embryo has to become a day 3, 8 cell embryo. You're absolutely right. The trouble is we can't predict which 
एक सेल एम्ब्रियोज एंड डे थ्री विल बिकम ब्लास्टिस डे फाइव वे नॉट फॉर्चून टेलर्स एंड Every eight cell embryo looks like every other eight cell embryo. So instead of playing any, any, my number and choosing which embryos to transfer on day eight, and never being certain whether you put the best ones back, it's better to wait till day five. There are lots of other advantages also. So, for example, if lots of clinics will transfer on day three, they'll deliberately transfer lots of embryos in the hope that maybe one will stick. That's not good medicine because obviously the risk is if you put too many embryos back, you increase the risk of a multiple pregnancy, with its attendant risk of obstetric complications, prematurity, preeclampsia, all kinds of problems. Which means these women may get pregnant, but they may often lose the pregnancy, or the baby may have a lot of long-term problems because it's born so prematurely. Similarly, when you have the technology to be able to choose the best embryos by allowing them to compete amongst themselves. Why not use that? Doesn't that just simple common sense? And the reason labs don't is because they don't have good enough technology. They're not confident about their embryologists. They're not confident about their culture medium and their incubator. This is why they take these shortcuts, and this actually harms patients. Not only does it risk your chance of having a multiple pregnancy, which its own sets of problems, it also means that if the doctor is transferring so many top quality embryos, he doesn't have spare embryos left to freeze. Which means again, you've reduced your overall chance of getting pregnant, and this is why, as a patient, you should confirm that the doctor does only blastocyst transfers in their lab, no shortcuts. And let's assume you only have maybe one good eight cell embryo on day three. I would still suggest you wait till day five, because if that embryo is going to arrest, it's better that it arrests in the labs, where at least you can see that it's arrested. And there's no point of going through that horrible two-week waiting period where there's no chance that embryo is going to become a baby because it's going to arrest in your uterus instead of arresting in the lab. So what's the point of putting yourself through all that torture? And much more importantly, if it does arrest, at least you'll have learned valuable information so that you can change something for your next IVF cycle. I think if you find the right IVF doctor, they will do all this automatically, so you don't need to worry. But you need to look out. For your own best interest, you need to make sure that your doctor is doing what's right for you, not what's right for him. That's why you need to be well informed, and that's why you should go to our website at www.drmalpani.com. We've got hundreds of pages of information written specifically for patients and written by me, so I can vouch for them. And if you have more questions, please send me our free second opinion form. You can email it to me. It's on our website. Ask me whatever questions you like, and I'm more than happy to answer them. I will look forward to helping you to have a baby. Nothing will give me more joy and pleasure. See you. 